Hello student, now in this class we are going to talk about the cloning vector. Cloning vector. Now, let me give you an example. There was a plasmid in a bacterial cell, okay? And this plasmid is a extra chromosomal circular DNA. Okay, remember, please remember that the plasmid is a plasmid is a extra chromosomal circular DNA which has the ability to replicate. Okay, now when this vector was observed, then the scientists they thought that why don't we use this plasmid? which has the ability to replicate, which has the ability to multiply, okay, independently, without the help of any organelles, okay. So, if they can replicate independently, they, they try to use, okay, they do research and then they found that this can, this plasmid can be used as a cloning vector. Now, cloning vector means they are going to carry your these molecules are going to carry your DNA fragments, right? So, this bacteria, okay, in a bacteria like E. coli, you will find a plasmid which has the ability to replicate. For example, if this is your vector and if I insert it here, our DNA fragments or our target DNA, our gene of interest, okay, if you insert it and if this vector, if they multiply, just say that they have multiply. It means that our desired fragment also they are multiplying. Okay? Right? So, to see, you can clearly see that if they multiply, if our vector multiplies, then they also multiply. Okay? Our DNA fragment get copied. So, we have to understand there are so many vectors. Okay? Some of the common vectors like PBR322. Okay? like retrovirus so I'll write as one of the common plasmid P, B, R, 3, Q, B, 2 so P for plasmid okay and then B, R for Bolivar and Rodriguez is a scientist name and 3, Q, B, 2 is a strain types of strain okay likewise now this vector it is there in your textbook okay and this vector can be used this can be used as a vector in our DNA technology. It was isolated from plus, from E. coli. Okay, that's why we said P for plasmid. Likewise, we have retrovirus. Now, retrovirus are very common, and these are used for the animal cells. Okay, animal cells. Number three for plants. Now, there's some. Uh, microorganism like agrobacterium tumefacient this is said to be one of the best vector that can be used in the case of plant if you want to insert DNA fragments or gene of interest or you want to manipulate the gene in plants you can use this that's why we also said this microorganism as the plant genetic engineer okay the next number four like we can also use as bacteriophage bacteriophage you know that is a virus that infect bacteria so bacteriophage okay like t2 phases can also be used as a vector not only that we have bag bacterial artificial chromosome and then we also have yak yeast artificial chromosome number seven like phase me okay this also this also can be used as a vector so these are some examples of vector that you may come across okay now let's see the characteristic features of the cloning vector what are the features what characteristics that they should have to, to be a cloning vector the first one is said to be ori. They should have ori. Ori means 
origin of replication. Each vector should have at least one origin. Origin of replication. In molecular basis of biology, we have already discussed that origin is a point or it's a area, it's a basis, nitrogenous sequences from where the replication is going to start, right? From where the copying of DNA is going to start. So if there must be an ORI in a cloning vector. And if you want to produce high copy number, okay? High copy number. If you want to produce high copy number of your DNA fragments, of your target DNA, then there must be more ORI. So ORI, ORI will control the copy number, okay, or the uh, the cloning of the DNA fragments. The second is second point is selectable marker. Selectable marker. Now, selectable marker means the the antibiotic resistant gene. Okay, antibiotic antibiotic resistant. Gene. In cloning vector, there must be antibiotic resistant gene. Now, what is antibiotics? Antibiotics means that inhibit the growth of microorganism, right? Antibiotics means inhibit inhibit the inhibit the growth of microorganism. Growth of micro organism so in a cloning vector just say that this is a cloning vector plasmid and there is a ori and there is a say that there is a antibiotic resistant gene ampr ampicillin resistant gene we call ampicillin what is ampicillin? Ampicillin is an antibiotic, right? Tetracycline. So there are so many antibiotics, okay? Whenever your immune system, uh, when you, whenever you get diseases, pharmacist advises you to take antibiotics, right? So those antibiotics, usually they don't uh, boost the immune system, okay? They inhibit the growth of microorganisms. They don't allow the grow the growth of the any kind of bacterial microorganism. Okay, tetracycline, tanamycin, chlorophenicol. So these are some of the antibiotics. Now a cloning vector should have a selectable marker means they should have antibiotic resistant gene. When I say antibiotic resistant gene just say that you have your cloning vector, you have, you have a vector which can fight with the antibiotics. Okay? So in case of plasmid or PBR322, this is a vector. We have TETR. It means that this is tetra tetracycline resistant gene. In PBR322, you will find there are two selectable markers. One is antibiotic, one is ampicillin resistant gene. Another one is tetracycline resistant gene. The meaning is that they have this gene in a nutrient media. Even though the medium, okay, if, if, even though in a medium, if there is an ampicillin, if there is an ampicillin, then any microorganism will die, right? If there is a tetracycline in a nutrient media, then microorganism will not grow. But our vector have the ampicillin resistant gene. It means that even though in a medium, if there is an ampicillin, the cloning vector will survive. Okay? If there is a tetracycline in a medium, then then also the our cloning vector will survive because they have a tetracycline resistant gene. Okay? So this factor, okay, point number two is very important. Okay? There is a second condition uh, that very important uh, point that you have to know that in this selectable marker is 
you are going to select B. It is going to identify, right? Selection and, and identification. Identification of transform cells. I will discuss what is that transform cells in the next class. But selection and identification of the transform cells, okay, is going to your selectable marker is going to help. The third point is they should be smaller in size. Why? Because this is an experiment of practical practical process. And if if your vector is too large, okay too big okay then there's a chances of breaking they will break they will get degraded okay so small in size is preferred the vector should be small in size the last point is point number four recognition site recognition site Recognition site means we can also say it as restriction site. Okay, restriction site. This point was already asked in a medical examination. Okay, so let's discuss in detail. Let's try to understand what does it mean. So restriction site. Okay. Now, in in your vector, like PBR322, you will find that there is a restriction site. Just say that this is TETR, tetracycline resistant gene, and just say that here somewhere there is a gene called as BAMH1. Now BAMH1 is a restriction site, okay? Just say that ECOR1, ECOR1, ECOR1 site. Now, if there is an eco R1 in this side, it means that this will be the area where your restriction enzyme will cut or they will cliff, right? Restriction enzyme is going to cut. For example, if this is our vector and this is our DNA fragments, I'd say I have already discussed that the whatever the restriction enzyme that you're going to use. The same restriction enzyme is going to cleave your DNA fragments. If, because we have to insert this DNA fragment in a vector, right? So, if we use equal one, it means that there will be a restriction site even in the cloning vector. So, if this is the area of equal one, just say that this is the area of equal one. So, equal one area was deleted. Okay. So that's why we said restriction site. This will be the area where your restriction enzyme is going to cleave. And even the DNA fragment which was isolated will be cleaved by the eco R1 only. So that they will match together and they can be joined. So this is our, just say that, this is our DNA fragments inserted in a vector. And if you want to take BAMH1, uh, restriction enzyme, it means that there must be a restriction site restriction site should be there in the cloning vector. So if you use BAMH1 as a vector, as a restriction enzyme, then you will get BAMH1 DNA fragment sequences. Just say that this is the cleavage produced by the BAMH1. So this will be inserted in this position now. So this is a DNA fragments, okay? That's why there's a point to be remember that for better cloning or for better genetic engineering or if the process have to be completed, okay, then it is always preferred that there, there should be only one restriction site. More number of restriction sites will develop many fragments, okay? More number of fragments will be generated, then it will hamper the process. One, one restriction site is suitable for the process of gene cloning or RDNA technology. Now, this is said to be ampicillin. The next factor is 
we have to remember that the target DNA, the target DNA or the gene of interest has to be inserted on those area where there is a selectable marker. Just say that I have inserted the target DNA in a tetracycline resistant gene. Then this is empty, right? So this point is very important, okay? We have to insert in a one of the selectable marker. Then in the ampicillin medium, in the ampicillin medium, if, if in a media there is a ampicillin, ampicillin, then what will happen? Our, even though there is an ampicillin, see there is an ampicillin resistant gene, so our RDNA will survive. They will multiply, okay? So RDNA means what? The DNA fragments and the vector, the vector molecule. So if we combine these two, we call RDNA or recombinant DNA or recombinant molecules, okay? Because from DNA, we are going to get product, okay? It may be protein, it can, because proteins are, again, protein will form many enzymes, right? So we can say that recombinant enzymes, recombinant proteins, okay? If it is developed with the help of RDNA technology. So if you put ampicillin, even though our vector will survive. Now, this becomes very expensive, right? Because we have to keep on transfer the nutrient. Because you need two medium containing tetracycline and containing ampicillin. So this becomes expensive. So one method is called insertional inactivation. Inactivation. What is the meaning of that? Okay. Now, there is a gene called as Y gene, right? That gene, and this produces beta galactosidase. Now, this beta, beta galactosidase is a chromogenic substrate. Chromogenic substrate. And it is going to provide colors. Now, if our, in our vector, in our vector, there is a Z gene, Z gene, okay? Now, in that position, if we insert our target DNA, just say that we have insert our target DNA, then what will happen? Our vector, if we take out this Z gene, and then if we insert our DNA fragment, it means that beta galactosidase gene will not produce. Then our target DNA means our RDNA will not produce any color, no color, no color, okay, means colorless. But if any other microorganism grows in that nutrient media, they have a bed, right, and they are going to produce blue colon, blue colonies. So in that way, we can able to identify which one is our transformed cells and which one is our non-transformed cells, okay? Our colorless one will be our non, our, our transformed cells and the blue, blue color will be our non-transformed cells. So these are the characteristics, important features of the cloning vector. In next class, we're going to discuss Okay, about the insertion of our cloning vector. Once the cloning vector and our RDNA is ready, now we have to introduce into the host okay, for the multiplication of our RDNA. Thank you.